What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I feel like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs like the founders of P90X, Atari, many more, how they overcome big challenges in life and business. This is part of the e-commerce mastery series where top sellers and experts teach you what really works to boost your e-commerce business. Our sponsor today is Rise25.com, where entrepreneurs of six, seven, and eight-figure businesses come together live and in person every few months to solve their biggest business challenges and leave with lifelong friendships. Check out rise25.com run by myself and co-founder John Corcoran. It's application only. I'm really excited. Today we have Russell Sachs, founder of Campus Protein. He started a national supplement company while attending Indiana University and grew it to over 1,200 sales reps. He went from zero to seven figures in revenue. Russell, thanks for joining me. Thanks so much for having me, Jeremy. I appreciate it. Even though I went to Madison, so I'm a Badger, you know, yeah, like Hoosier, we going, we're yeah. okay. We're okay on that front. You know, there's so many things that stick out to me when I read your story. One um, is the grill marketing you guys do, the amazing stuff you've done with growing the sales reps, um, some of the platform horrors you've had to endure. Um, I want to start with two things that are top of mind for you uh, right now, which is Black Friday is big for you. Yeah, um, we'll talk about that and a new flavor you have coming up. So Black Friday, how did this become sort of a cult following? So when I was in college, I guess maybe we'll help if I get track of the backstory. Yeah. Our team. So I mean, it always comes back down to a w- women, right? So it yeah. always comes back to especially especially for campus protein <laughs> and this company as a whole. So. I've always had an entrepreneurial mindset. I always knew that I kind of wanted to do something on my own. And went to Indiana University, joined a fraternity, Delta Tau Delta. Yeah. I want you to stick I, there for one second, actually. Sure. So go back, because what I found interesting in your story is you come from a background of entrepreneurs, right? A I family did, yeah. line of entrepreneurs. So what are some of the things that you saw them doing when you were growing up? Um, I think the biggest thing for me was uh, freedom. Um, the ability to create your own destiny and um, really the ability to have freedom in many different ways of life. And that's something that I always aspire to do and always looked up to different family members um, of my own. Yeah. And it was always something I had set out to do. And, you know, upon graduation, I was kind of, I, I was able to, you You're know, at a crossroads. Want, yeah, I was at a crossroads yeah. because I could have joined a couple family businesses, but I really had always wanted to do something on my own and build something of my own. And yeah. that's um, tough because you have a, a fallback plan. That's, that's probably a really good fallback plan. It wasn't a bad fallback plan, yeah. but I did, I didn't want it to, uh, I didn't want to fall back on it. What was some of the examples? What, what kind of businesses do you see that some of your family? Sure. Do? Yeah. So on my dad's side, uh, my family's in the luggage business. They own uh, retail stores in California, Mm -hmm. um, Manhattan, New York City area. And on my mom's side, um, they own women's shoe stores in Manhattan. Did you see with any of those type of business like, oh, I'd like to be in the luggage business or I'd never want to be in the luggage business? What was your sentiment about seeing them build the business? I was always interested in a style of retail and really what got me into having an online business in general. What my grandpa was somebody who, who he built my, uh, he really started my family's luggage business from nothing. And yeah. um, he did, a, in my opinion, a really great job growing it. Yeah. And I always looked up to him and he knew absolutely nothing about, te- about technology. Couldn't turn a computer on to save his life. But he, he said something to, me, something to me when I was really young. Yeah. And he said, if I could walk at 8 a.m. or 7 a.m. into any one of my retail stores and I already have $10,000 in sales for the day, wouldn't it be a bad start? And that really hit home for me because I was like, okay, with an online store, you're open 24 hours a day. You can walk in at 7 a.m. and already have 10 grand in sales. Right. So um, that stuck with me. Yeah. So what else did he teach you? What else did you see him? Because you probably saw him just grind. Too. Oh, yeah. I mean, he was, my grandpa was just the ultimate legend. Um, 
you know, the type of guy you who walks into a room, everyone turns their head, everyone knows he's there, just the life of a party. Mm. Uh, and and really, he took that, he took his characteristics and he took his personality and translated into business and built some really incredible relationships and uh, built a really incredible business that I looked up to. Why luggage? Why do you, why do you start with luggage? Um, it had to do with when he was in the military, uh, somebody hmm. who, um, I'm not exactly sure who it was, but he somehow got involved with some sort of leather goods business with them. And that's mm-hmm. kind of what kicked it off. Mm-hmm. So now we fast forward, you're at Indiana University, you're, you're pledging at the time? I'm pledging Delta Tau Delta at Indiana University. Okay. What happens? I joined this fraternity, and my fraternity is basically all guys who run their high school football team, just absolute jocks. And, you know, here I am, this kid who's never, I don't even know how I got in. I, I've never lifted a weighted day in my life. <laughs> and they, they're like, you know, Russ, if, if you're trying to get with girls, you, you better start hitting the gym with us. And they, they really laid on the pressure, and I started going to the gym with them. And about once per month, they would take a trip over to GNC, and they'd spend about three or 400 bucks on supplements. That's a lot. Which right? is, I mean, which a ton of, ton I'm of money. In, in you know in college, I want free T-shirts and free pizza. Like, let alone spending three or four hundred dollars on oh, supplements. I thought it was ridiculous. I mean, at the time, I didn't even know what supplements were. So, you know, you guys are complaining about not having enough money for beer when we go to the bars. I said, you, you know, you're spending it on supplements, and they said, well, you know, this stuff's really important. Right. And I said, well, instead of you know, I, I remember we took a trip to the store and they came in for one product. The guy tried to sell them five different things. And I was like, this seems like such a hassle. It seems so inconvenient. Why don't you guys just hop online, buy it online? I'm sure it's cheaper. Right. And they said, well, it is cheaper, but we have to wait like five days to get it. So the thing with college students is they don't want to wait. They're not the best planners. If they want something. Maybe they're willing to spend a little bit of extra money on it, but they're going to end up kind of having buyer's remorse in a way like, gosh, I shouldn't have spent that money. Right. So in my mind, if we could create something that provided competitive online pricing yeah. and then offer really fast delivery or even better same-day delivery, right. it would be home run. And that's really what we did at Indiana University. We set up a storage locker. It was literally one of those storage lockers that you rent. We filled it up with supplements, and we set up an online store. How big is the storage locker? Like, what what are we picturing? Well, I should back up. Before the storage locker, it was all stored in my frat house. But we eventually moved to a storage locker. The storage locker, oh, man. uh, I'm picturing, like, I don't know if you saw Breaking Bad, where he, like, stores the money. Yeah. It's it's almost like a little room. It's exactly what it was. It literally just like that. Yeah. What, at what point did you think, I'm going to do something with this? Because you could have been like, that's interesting, yeah. and do nothing with it. Um, the business, you mean? Is yeah, the your... business. Yeah, just say, like, uh, I wanna, I, I'm going to I'm gonna wanted, go solve this problem. You no, know, I wasn't sure if this was going to be uh, something that I – for me, it was I, I really wanted to – I had a bunch of smaller businesses when I was in high school. Like I said, I've always had a, kind of had an entrepreneurial mindset. I sold a bunch of things on eBay. I had a small electronics business um, in high school as well, and – I wasn't sure if this was going to be, you know, that thing that I was really passionate about because for me, the, the most successful people are people who are super passionate about it. I mean, you know, the saying is true. If uh, you love what you're doing, you're ever working and I love what I do. And uh, I wasn't sure at that point if this right. was something I was going to love. I didn't know a lot about it yet. Right. And I was just kind of getting my feet wet. Um, so, yeah, back to the storage locker. We, we rent the storage locker. We set up an online site. And I tell my pledge brothers, you know, if we set up this business, you stop, stop buying stuff at GNC, start buying it for me. I'll, I'm down the hall. I'll deliver it right to you. <laughs> right. And in the beginning, we, we set it up so that we were really competitive on price. And we were buying through a distributor. Our margins were absolutely terrible. We were losing money on most products just so we could build up this reputation. Really? That we do have really good prices. So we did that. And... I remember when we finally got our first order that I didn't know who it was from. I was like, wow, this is incredible. I don't know who this person is. <laughs> it's a great feeling. Yeah. yeah, it was amazing. It was amazing. And we had, and the, the original concept was same day delivery. So we picked up the product from the storage unit at that time, drove it over to this customer who was a freshman in the dorm. They were happy as could be. And um, So you actually just drove it over yourself? Oh, I drove it over myself. I drove it over myself for over a year. Yeah. Wow. I, mean, I love you know, that. That's amazing. Yeah. We, yeah. Uh, we, yeah. We, we definitely were grinding. Um, you know, it was. 
How do you manage that with classes and you're in a fraternity and social life? Sure. Yeah, it wasn't easy. There were definitely some sacrifices, definitely some trade-offs. Um, I remember being in class and constantly being on my computer, not paying a ton of attention, but actually texting customers because we had set up um, a system where we could basically text customers from our computer and we could say, you know, hey, this is, you know, Russell from Campus Protein. Mm. Thanks for your order. What time's good for me to deliver it later today? And that's how we would do it. As the orders came in, we would uh, kind of line up the schedule for when we were done with class and we'd uh, deliver them out. So initially, the first thing you did, do you call, do you look at the most popular products your frat brothers are buying and call? Like, what do you do first to, for your initial product? Yeah, I think that's one of the toughest things for anyone in business is uh, one knowing what's a stock and I think even more difficult knowing when it's time to drop that product yeah. and knowing when it's, you know, it's uh, kind of lived out. It's uh, shelf life. Yeah. It's life. Yeah. It's life there because uh, for us, we've always been really lucky and really fortunate for us. We were college students ourselves. So once I really got into the nitty gritty, really figured out what, what this industry was really all about for me and for my business partners, it was easy for us to kind of figure out, what other college students would like because we were that customer. Right. When you are that customer and you're living that lifestyle, you know, we were those guys, you know, going to the gym on Friday before we went out to the bar. Like that, that we were living that life. So it was very easy for us to, you know, gauge it based on what we liked and then base it on, you know, what our fraternity brothers like and our friends. How many products do you start with when you first get out of the gates? When we first started, I think we had something around 15 products. Something 15. Like that. That's a lot. Yeah. It, and it was a lot at the time. Yeah, we had, you know, we had very low inventory, obviously, and a very, you know, once it sold out, that was usually it. Um, but it, it worked. And you set up a site at the time. What's, so we what's up, the landscape look like from the, the technology side of things? Um, from the tech side, it was something, you know, some, for someone who doesn't know, uh, any coding, which is which is me. I built it myself, and you built it yourself. I built it myself, and I think it looked that way too. <laughs> <laughs> I think it looked. Could people like make it. purchases on it? Oh yeah, that's a. And so, you yeah. built it yourself, and it could make purchases. That's pretty impressive. All right, I mean, I appreciate it. It was uh, it was very basic. It, it got the job done. Um, but yeah, people would buy on it, and then we would follow up with a text message to confirm a delivery time. So. Really, we kind of coined it a virtual retail store because the whole process is going on virtually, but then you have kind of that in-person, like you'd be in a retail store experience mm -hmm. with somebody delivering the product and explaining how to use it yeah. and any questions that you have right there in person. That's so, high-touch service, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, it was really, you know, it was a real niche and nobody at the time was really focusing on college students. So that was, you know, we saw a huge opportunity there. You know, college students make up such a large portion of this industry and this demographic, the, the demographic of college students is huge in the industry. And it was amazing that nobody was covering Why them. do you think that is? It's just hard to reach them or why? You got to also remember the supplement industry isn't super old yet. It's, it's kind of still a new industry. Um, and it's still maturing and it's still... Uh, uh, it's going to be interesting to see where becoming it goes. more popular. It's definitely becoming more mainstream and more popular, and um, there are a bunch of you know big box retail stores that are also helping uh, helping with that. But um, yeah, I. Uh, What's been the first big milestone for you? You order it, and then you have to tell everyone, okay, don't buy from GNC anymore. You got to come to me. It's like the um, legal drug dealer, except for it's you know supplement. That's really yeah, and that's kind of that's what it was. And um, even when my my business partner he uh, he helped us expand to the entire Boston area. He went to Boston University, Turin. Yeah. And he 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 said like when he first started, he's like, oh man, this is like being you know I'm the protein. Dealer. I got some stuff over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, the big milestone for us was. You know, my business partner, True, he's my best friend from high school. He brought it to Boston University, and since Boston 
is so um, intensely populated with colleges. He Tons was of colleges, to, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was really ended up being a great spot for us, and he was able to quickly um, replicate the model in a bunch of other schools in the area. My other business partner, Mike, went to Indiana University with me and really helped conquer IU, um, which is you know a, a large school, much like uh, huge, much, yeah. much like Wisconsin. And um, yeah, the, the biggest milestone for us is we entered into this business competition through Indiana University, yeah. and it's called the Best Competition. Yeah. Basically, a bunch of successful Indiana University alumni came together to There's promote powerhouses, our- right? Yeah. Mark Cuban, who else? Yeah, it was. Uh, it was essentially Shark Tank for college students. Yeah. But it was. And we had gotten to a point where I remember it was senior year, and really we had become so passionate about living this lifestyle. And, you know, we were all in super good shape. We're going to the gym all the time. We're eating really healthy. And we just came, became really passionate about it. Like, how cool would it be if we can really make a career out of this and do this for the rest of our lives? Yeah. And you and, were thinking that at the time before this competition, like this, yeah, we yeah. were yeah, and we were looking for ways to either raise money or we were looking at different business competitions. And I remember searching online and just on a complete whim, stumbled upon something called the Best Competition, and it was a business competition for students, Shark Tank style, and the grand prize was a hundred thousand dollars, and it was at Indiana University. I couldn't believe it. I was like, I, you know had never heard of it before and I literally had just found out about it and you, it was the first year they were running the competition and you had to be a senior to enter. Mm. I'm a senior and I'm like, this is meant to be, I need to enter into this. So we enter and the first round was basically just submit your business plan, which we did. So we did that, we waited, we hoped, and then we got um, a call saying that we made it to the next round and the following rounds were similar to what you see yeah. on Shark. Really? So tell me about that. You show up, is it just you or is it two of you so or three we- of you? So it's me and Mike. Uh, Tarun was in Boston at the time. Yeah. It's, it's me and Mike, and we, uh, we pitched to basically a panel. I mean, um, more people than people ended up investing because it was the first year they were running it, so it was kind of like, uh, you know, there were professors that wanted to see kind of the style, and there were a bunch of people in the room, and it was definitely intimidating. I'd never done anything like that before. Uh, a ton of practicing beforehand, but, you know, thankfully, I guess it went well. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember um, what worked in your pitch? Like, what was something that you felt went well? Because obviously, you, you, we what, know the end of the story is you, you end up winning it. But We won, but I think the thing for us was we had a track. Even though it was a small track record, we had some sort of track record. Yeah. Not that it was an... I don't even know if I could call it a proven model yet, but it was something. There you was had some something. traction. Yeah, we had some traction, and we had done, I think, a bunch of things, kind of, to already set this up as a legitimate business that a bunch of other people hadn't done yet. We had done all the paperwork, we had done all the legal stuff, everything. Oh, we done all the insurance stuff. Everything was filed away, mm-hmm. and I think just um, having that and. We really came in with a, a kind of a scalable plan. We said, look, we're doing you know, X amount of dollars at Indiana University, and we're doing this much at Boston University, and we've been there for X amount, number of years, and if we yeah. took this model and replicated it to all these different schools, look what we could do. And we, sh- you know, again, not that it was, um, not that anything was guaranteed, but we said, look, this is very doable, and I think we kind of laid out a plan and a foundation and a vision that they shared with us yeah. and thankfully it ended up working out and yeah yeah so, so we Russell, had- do you do you remember any good questions because a lot of times in these panels they'll kind of probe a little bit or give you some advice i'm curious what some of the advice whether maybe it was a mentor that you had during the time you're running this or someone on the panel mm-hmm. Um, Do you remember any good advice that you got I mean, that helped think, kind of point you in the right direction? I've received, honestly, uh, fortunate enough to gotten a, really a bunch of good advice. But I think probably the biggest one is, and I know everyone says this, but there are going to be there are always going to be people that say this is an idea that's either not going to work or um, something that doesn't doesn't seem that feasible. If you truly believe in it and, you know, it hasn't been, you know, 
many years of zero dollars in sales, then right. it's probably something, you know, at least, you know, seeking out and worth sticking to and um, probably devoting some time yeah. to. Yeah. Because we have, I mean, even we have people even after we won the competition saying that, that I don't know if this was, if this idea is going to work out. Really? And uh, yeah, and for us, cool. that was surprising. We thought, you know, that was, we thought winning this competition would give us some confirmation, not only to us, but yeah. maybe to some other people who doubted us originally. Yeah. Uh, but we still had people, yeah. and I think you're always going to have those people, and I think it's important to just stick to your guns. Yeah. And you know, Russell, there's, that's a crossroads, right? Because at least what I read right before then, you have to sort of decide, am I going to go through this full time? Am I going yeah. to take a job? And same thing with your co-founders, right? So talk about yeah. Yeah, what we, was going uh, on for you guys. We all, you know, we hoped we were going to win this competition. And again, in our gut, we felt like we had this and our plan made sense to us. And it was, you know, hopefully these investors were going to share the same vision that we have. But we, we all had backup plans. We, we all were interviewing for full, full-time jobs. I actually accepted a full-time job. Really? Um, yeah, I did. And What were you, what did you accept? What was it? Um, it was a job with Macy's um, okay. as a, a buyer and planner. And I thought that was interesting because it was retail focused and I would get some experience there, but ultimately ended up declining it, um, obviously to pursue this full time right. once we won the competition. And I remember, you know, getting that phone call that we, we had won the competition and calling my business partners or just like decline your job offers for doing this full time. And it was, it was were they immediately a- yes or did they still think about it? Um, we had all pretty much figured out beforehand that if, if we win this, we're going to pursue it. So you graduate, right? I graduate and I immediately move back home. Um, we set up an office in our hometown and we really just grinded for, you know, a year, year and a half, took almost, um, took, you know, very little money out of the business and just really wanted, back in. Yeah, yeah, just wanted to put it back in and grow it as much as we possibly could. And um, we were fortunate enough to get to a point where, you know, we can move to Manhattan and move our office uh, to Manhattan as well and do all these other cool things. But um, it was a lot of work and it was a lot of long hours and definitely, you know, there be times when you're, when you're, you know, doubting what you're doing, is this definitely the right decision? I remember thinking, you know, sometimes is, is this definitely something that I want to continue doing and did I make the right call here? And, you know, there are always going to be those times you really can't help it. But, uh, you know, thankfully we all stuck with it and everyone worked really, really hard and it paid off. What were some of the, what did you focus in on when you were grinding and working long hours? I mean, we did, we did everything. We did, I mean, it was, we did customer service calls. We were developing at the time our, our the start of our private line we were negotiating with vendors because now we did have at least a little bit um of kind of like a a larger funding budget in order to make purchase orders directly with manufacturers so we didn't have to go directly through uh, so we didn't have to go through distributors so we were building those relationships and everything you could possibly imagine the three of us were doing Tell me about the private line. What point do you decide, okay, we want our own line and not just depend on these other brands? So for us, that was actually something we had always wanted to do. Yeah. It was something that was actually part of our original pitch at Indiana University. And the reason we wanted to do it was college students are very specific. They're obviously price sensitive. They have certain things that they like, you know, they're up on the latest trends. They don't, college students don't want to have to go to GNC and use a gold card in order to get discounts. They just want the discounts. So with all of that in mind and, you know, knowing how the college student thinks, we wanted to develop a product that was specifically curated for them. And that's what we did with Fuel, which is our private line product. Yeah. So to give you, I mean, be, between the messaging on the bottle, the way it looks, the way it feels, all the way down to the flavor, my business partner Tarun um, literally, you know, made his fraternity's jungle juice. Obviously, without is the that alcohol. what the flavor is? And that was that's actually our best-selling flavor. The flavor is jungle juice. 
as jungle juice, and it tastes just like jungle juice with, without the booze, obviously. Do but, people actually use that for parties? Like, put, well, it might as well be healthy if there's alcohol on it. I can't comment on that, okay. uh, but I, <laughs> I also can't endorse it, but uh, <laughs> right. I, I'm not sure. So what were the, what are the top sellers for you guys? What are some of the best sellers? Category wise or, pro, or specific both, product? Both. Um, the brand Cellucor has always been big for us. Uh, those guys do a really great job speaking to our demographic, speaking to the customer. Their products are cool. They look amazing and they work really well. Um, and that's, that's what a college student wants. I mean, even if you look at our website, if you could, if you stacked our, our site up next to, you know, the largest online supplement, um, website, we would only have about 8% of the products that they sell. Hmm. So again, college students want a very simple selection that just works. We've already done the work for them. Why should they have to sort through 10,000 products when we know that these are the ones that are the best. Right. And that's kind of one of the things that we're really good at. Exactly. That's one of the things that we're really good at and differentiates us is, um, you know, We've, we've done the work for you, and we also have this section called Stacks, which combines your favorite products that don't necessarily have to be the same brand. So I can get Campus Protein Fuel pre-workout, for example, with my favorite uh, gold standard optimal nutrition protein powder. So uh, no one else really does anything like that either, and we found that college students really like to try different things and bounce around and they don't necessarily want to stick to one brand while they're in college. How do you decide when to release a new product? Because you said you guys are coming out with a new flavor. Yeah, we are. We're really excited about it. We've been working on this for a few months now. Um, so our last flavor that we came out with was Orange Soda, which was a super big hit for us. It, it brought back kind of a lot of nostalgic moments from a bunch of people. If you ever remember the show, if you remember the show from Nickelodeon, uh, Keenan and Kel. Kel loves orange soda. So, and orange soda really, eh, people. I don't know. I don't know if people really uh, buy orange soda the way they used to, but people are loving <laughs> the orange soda. How do you fruit. test that before you obviously spend a lot of time and energy? Yeah. Um, so a couple of ways. We everything we do, we we really do for ourselves. It's yeah. the truth. I mean, even though we are, you know. I think four years out of college now, something like that. Um, you know, yeah, I think still, you, I read that the company has been around for almost seven years right now. Yeah. So, so yeah. I started my sophomore year yeah. of college. Exactly. So yeah, we test everything one on ourselves, obviously, if we like it, if our friends like it, right. and more importantly, if our campus reps like it, because those guys are on the ground today, they're in college, they know better than I do. Or better, my business partners do sometimes. Right. If something's going to work or not, um, then most likely it's it's going to work, and that's the model that we've used, and that's what's what's gotten us here today. Really, is that's really the way we test everything. Yeah, I'm just curious when you guys are sitting around the table, do you do like blind taste tests, or how do you how do you actually we do? We do so many. We probably I don't want to say we do more tests than anyone else, but we are honestly sucked perfectionists when it comes to the flavor. And my business partner, Turin, who's the CMO, has honestly an incredible palate. I mean, this guy is just, he's really unreal. And he can really do a great job articulating what's wrong or what's right with a specific product or hmm, flavor. That's impressive, and yeah. It's very impressive and it's a very unique skill. And um it's really been helpful. <laughs> What's the process now? You're coming out with a new flavor. When does it come out and how do you decide to launch it? So the flavor is coming out in about two weeks. Okay. And This won't release before then, by the way. So oh, if, okay. if you do want to, or I can make sure it doesn't. That's okay. Um, so. I'll, I'll leave it a mystery for okay. now. But the flavor is going to be, again, something that we've worked really hard on. So, I mean... Jungle juice. It tastes just like jungle juice. It, it has kind of that fruit punchy type taste with maybe a little bit of Mountain Dew, a little bit of Sprite sprinkled in there. I mean, it's just, it's a very flavor. Was that hard to do? It, it really wasn't. It was, you know, one of the more unique flavors that, you know, the lab that we're working with had 
and the Flavor House had produced. It They're was like super interesting. Who is flavor. this kid? Like well, we yeah, want we, a jungle. They're used to like cherry or strawberry or something normal. Yeah. We want jungle juice. Like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> what did they say to you when you when you came to them and you're like, we want jungle juice as a flavor? I, I'm pretty sure they're like, that's going to be awesome if we can nail it. <laughs> there was no pushback. But, they're like, yeah, we could do that. Sometimes you got to fight a little bit for stuff. Okay. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I mean, we came in with all the ingredients to make, you know, your classic jungle juice. And for orange soda, I mean, it really tastes just like orange soda. Like, a, I mean, and it's a diet orange soda because there's no sugar in it. Right. And it, it tastes better than a diet orange soda, in my opinion. But for our new flavor, it's going to have the same... Um, you know, quality wise, it's obviously going to be the same. And we're going to obviously kind of keep in mind the stuff we've done in the past. Yeah. How do you roll it out when, when you come out? Uh, yeah. So our rollout starts with about a week in advance. You'll see some teasers on our site for it. Our reps. We, so we have uh, 1200 campus reps across the country yeah. representing a little over uh, 350 college campuses. That's awesome. So, yeah. On those college campuses, you know, they'll be doing obviously guerrilla marketing. Um, additionally, we're, you know, really, I mean, social media, obviously, college students are all over. So it's a really easy way for us to communicate to not only our reps, but also to our customers. So we'll be doing a lot of that. And then um, talk about guerrilla marketing. Sure. What do you do for guerrilla marketing? We do pretty much everything that you could think of for guerrilla marketing. Um, we, I mean, so I guess, I don't know if you could throw this into the category of guerrilla marketing, but this is something kind of interesting that we did. We, yeah. we did a play on um, Donald Trump's campaign of make America great again. We said, make America swole again. And we created these make America swole again hats, which did really well. And we coupled that with a MakeAmericaSwillAgain.com website. Okay. So if you go to MakeAmericaSwillAgain.com. How do you spell that? Um, S-W-O-L-E. Uh, okay. So if you go to MakeAmericaSwillAgain.com, it will direct you to that page. Okay. And we also, uh, at one of the largest bodybuilding expos, the Arnold Expo, yeah. we actually had a plane flying around the expo trailing a sign that says make america swole again dot com kind really? of the, the way you would see it at a like plane. A, yeah the way you would see it at like the beach you know when you see those planes go by yeah so we did that how did you um, even think to do that it's uh again we try to come up with really unique ideas and uh we think we know our our customer really well again we we, we are the customer so um Everything that we do is based on if we think it's funny, if we think it's whatever. Um, so we thought this could be kind of a funny idea. And then what we did as well is we did a, this was right before, you know, we were lucky enough to speak to somebody at Snapchat who gave us kind of exclusive access to their filters before they released them to the public. Hmm. And at the expo, we had a filter with a mock plane that shows makeamericasoligan.com. So between the Snapchat filter, the plane flying around, and the website, um, it was something really unique that, that worked really well for us. You really stuck out. What was yeah. the response like at the... At the oh, uh, the response was, you know, people tweeting, did anyone just see that plane go by with this Make America Swole again? And people were, you know, they couldn't believe it. And it was funny. It was, it was really funny. What's another like a typical? I mean, that can be done for that, for that type of event. But for, that your campus reps do for guerrilla marketing on a daily sure. basis. So for our campus reps, we provide them with everything that they need to be successful, and it's really up to that rep if um, the amount of time that they're going to put in, the amount of energy they're going to put into being to being successful. So they have flyers, they have door hangers. Um, we even one of our most successful campus protein campaigns was uh, campus protein condoms that say I think I, I think I saw you one get to bag your protein so was it actually a condom or was it oh, protein yeah, it was, powder that, inside that was a real condom oh it was okay yeah, these are real uh, we actually we initially gave them out 
the first year that we went to the Arnold Expo, we had a booth there, and that was kind of the giveaway. And we had people coming over to our booth saying, are you guys really giving away condoms? We'd be like, yeah. They'd be like, can you give me some? I, <laughs> <laughs> I guess that is the, the – when you were going to the gym and everything, you know, it kind of goes back to, to that. So, Yes. So uh, the reps – for us, sampling is really, really big, and it's a high. Con every order you get three samples, and that's uh, one of the highest converters for us. To really, use. because for a college student, you know, a thirty dollar investment in a pre workout's a big deal. Yeah. So if I can try it first, yeah. then you know it's a, it's a no brainer. If it's great, then I'm going to buy it. Um, so that's that's a big one for us. How do you do that? Do you do like make them purchase a sample pack, or do you? Make them so if you any purchase you buy from our site, you're going to get samples. Okay, so you'll have the opportunity to try that. We cool. do have a sample box uh, option. We have a basic box and a premium box, and kind of based on what you choose is uh, the type of samples that you get. Maybe in the basic one, you'll get you know a bunch of one serving samples. You get the premium one, you'll get a bunch of samples, but they're you know three or four servings each. So you'll get you know a couple of days to try it out. But um, you know both of those people seem to really like. That's smart. Yeah. Talk about, Russell, for a second, the sales reps, because that's huge, right? Yeah. How did you initially build out your first few? Because you have 1,200 right now. We do. Uh, at first, it was really tough. Um, we reached out to anyone and everyone we knew who was interested in being a campus rep. And the... The job title and kind of what their what our expectations of them have obviously changed over time. But initially, yeah. it was very tough to build up to build up that you know rep base. And you you want to get people also at the same time who are super passionate about it because we have a lot of reps who are absolutely they're absolutely incredible. And they're super passionate about health and fitness. I mean, and they're they're really the backbone of our business. Right. And for them, it's not about the money. It's really about helping people. And for us to to watch this kind of all unfold is absolutely amazing. And it's given us an opportunity to you know meet some really incredible people, um, our, our reps. And uh, you know, every year at the Arnold, we have kind of this. Uh, this rep get together. It's like uh, a conference, and it's really just absolutely incredible. And wow! That, How many people show up to that usually? Um, Are yeah, we talking like a thousand people. Uh, well, it's it's in Ohio, um, so not everyone comes. But yeah. uh, last year we had close to two hundred people come, and it it was really amazing. It was really cool, and we have some guest speakers come in, and it's really exciting for them. But it's it's really incredible for us, and it's super humbling because. You get to meet so many incredible people, and like I was saying, a lot of for a lot of these people, it's not about the money. It, they not only do they get really great experience, but we've been fortunate enough to have the opportunity to place a lot of these reps in their dream jobs with some big supplement companies post graduation. Really? Wow! So that's been, I mean, yeah, it's, it's you're like an amazing company. feeder system for these companies. <laughs> yeah, because um, we, you know, we have all the all the data on, on those reps and, um, you know, we know how they are, how we, we know their experience and we yeah. know how they perform. They're getting real world on the ground experience. I mean, they are, it really is an amazing opportunity. We also have a really cool internship program, which, um, which our reps really seem yeah. to love. How does but, that work? Is that different um, from the rep, the internship? Yeah, that's different. That's different. It's usually, it's usually for the summer. Um, and okay. they come into the office in the city. Oh, they come to New York. Yeah, yeah, it's oh. it's not virtual or anything. It's yeah, it's uh, it's like uh, yeah, it's like an eight week long program. That's cool. What are the expect? What were the expectations at the beginning for the campus rep, and then how does it differ from now? Um, yeah, because you said it cha it's changed. It has. I'll tell you, it, it's changed a lot. Um, initially, the model was campus protein is gonna have competitive online pricing. And we're going to do same day delivery, and we actually had at one point about twelve or thirteen campuses set up with inventory on hand. That's wild, yeah. And what we found out was it wasn't as easy to scale that way as we thought it would. 
and we, we thought it would be a really cool model to offer that same day delivery. However, um, college students, again, um, although we, we do know them really well, we had um, certain expectations and sometimes product wouldn't get delivered on time and you'd have upset customers. And we were, what it came down to for us was we wanted to have a consistent brand message. Yeah. And the easiest way for us to do that was to control the entire process from making that first purchase to when they received the product. Right. So today we do offer expedited delivery. If you're a college student, you're going to get expedited delivery and you're going to get your order really quickly. However, the rep's not literally going to hand it to you. You're going to receive it in the mail and the rep's going to follow up with you and tell you how to take it and you know help you with your um, exercise, nutrition, and you know, whatever your goals may be, they're going to help you with that, but they're yeah. not going to physically hand you that yeah. product. Yeah. So initially, the expectation was they're really not only delivering the education, but they're delivering it to the person. Yeah, their uh, their role has definitely changed, and from what we've seen, it um, it's been better for both ends. It's better for them, and it's been better yeah. um, from our side as well. They can focus on selling. Um, yeah. The training process has got to be remarkable too, because you bring someone on probably from scratch, yep. who probably has no experience in maybe selling at all um, yeah. or supplements. Maybe maybe they have some background. What's the training process like? So that's definitely evolved over time as well. I mean, I remember just going back to when we first graduated and first set up an office in our hometown. We were making, you know, just a, you said, what were you guys doing? I mean, we were, you know, hiring reps was part of it. And we literally do the interviews over the phone. Um, we were hiring each individual rep. But it's a lot. Um, yeah, it was a lot. Today, it's, uh, it's very virtual to a point. And then we have, so we built out, a rep training process and kind of some benchmarks and check marks along the way to make sure that they're um, absorbing all the information that we're giving to them. And yeah, like, what's uh, an example of what? Like, do you do like a secret shopper call and call them, or what do you? How do you uh, monitor? So yeah, after after they uh, they go through the entire training process, and there's a bunch of videos and quizzes and a bunch of other stuff. But after they do all that. We have four territory managers across the United States, and the country's broken up into ways that make sense hmm. based on where colleges are located. Yeah. And the territory manager will then reach out. So there is that personal touch that kind of steps in. So although it's virtual up until a point, the, ver the territory manager will then step in and kind of take it from there. And uh, they transition them into, um, you know, some more stuff that they may not, may not have gotten from just watching a video. So yeah. um, it's definitely still, it's important to have that human touch. How do you find the people to hire them? The reps? Because I, I think I read somewhere like you get thousands of applications. I don't know if it was so, a month or yeah, every few months. Yeah. Or... We have now a base of people who want to be reps. And we're building out something now that's going to allow us to have had even more reps. So we want to make sure that we have the infrastructure there before we, you know, hire 10,000 more people that we have the infrastructure there before we kind of, you know, push the button on that. So we're working on building out some stuff there as well. But we do have a bank of a bunch of people. Who How want. are they hearing about this? Um, they hear about it through social media, through people who already are reps, yeah. uh, potential customers who maybe want to be reps. Um, yeah, I mean, at this point, we don't advertise the rep program. Yeah, what's been the big, biggest success with uh, the rep program, and then the biggest thing you had to cut out quickly because it just was not working, or the opposite, it just was hindering. For the rep program, or in general? Yeah, for the rep program. Yeah. Ah, uh, well, cut it out was definitely the having every rep deliver their individual orders. It right. was scalable, so that was something we quickly cut out um, once. You know, people didn't get their stuff, inventory going missing, whatever. Um, that was kind of something we're like, okay, we, we can't keep doing this. If we expense, you know, one more school, then <laughs> this could potentially be really, really bad. Um, so that was something. Um, what was the other question? Sorry about the, that. The, what worked really well with the reps, whether it was training or motivating? I think what worked, yeah, for us, um, building up a community and building up a place where our reps can come 
And, you know, it's obviously great to, t you know, these are like-minded people. So it's awesome to be able to come and talk about, you know, bodybuilding expos that are coming up and how they're prepping. But it's also a really cool place to just come and chat about school and college. And it's just, uh, it's just. It becomes like a mini, the, like social network sort of. Yeah, people who are like-minded in health and fitness and things like that. Yeah, I mean, and from what we found is one of the most valuable things you can do is connect people together, especially sure. like people. Um, and that sometimes brings yeah. out the best ideas for us yeah. when like-minded people come together and yeah. um, they have, you know, very similar interests yeah. and uh, priorities and other things, then, you know, we get some of the best ideas that way. Yeah. And the, the reps really benef benefit from it as well. Russell, how do you track the reps performance? In other words, let's say they do this grill marketing thing. Sure. And if someone goes online, and purchase it how does it work and maybe I, I don't know if there's like a special code this person only has for their area or it just doesn't yeah. matter anyone from this area this person gets credit for it so we've tried a bunch of different things for us and the most successful so far has been the rep has a unique link so for example campusprotein.com slash Jeremy yeah they come to the site through that link it might have been through your Facebook it might have been on a flyer you picked up and the second you come to the site, we cookie your browser. Yeah. So you could leave the site today and come back in two weeks from now, but now we know, you know who's going to get credit for that sale. How do they ensure that? Do you tell them some type of verbiage? Because I often I find times, like if I'm referring, say I'm like, Russell, this is an amazing site, you need to do it, and I have like an affiliate link or something, but I, I'm just like, whatever, just go to the site. You know, how do, you, how do they ensure that people go with their link like they listen what version i mean there's always going to be those times where you know there are gaps in the program and things don't go 100 percent according to plan but that is why we have our territory managers there and yeah. if the rep feels like there's um, an opportunity that they missed out on or a sale yeah. they missed out on they can easily reach out to their territory manager and they can fix the situation yeah i just mean if they say like is there some kind of verbiage they use like listen Make sure you use this because, or else I don't get credit. Or is there? I mean, some, here's you know the thing. Mean? Also, um, when you walk into a store, when you walk into a retail store, yeah. and this was also one of the reasons we want to start this business. When I watched my pledge brothers walk into GNC, the guy behind the counter looked like he'd never lifted a day in his life, honestly. <laughs> and I couldn't. I couldn't believe this is the guy who's giving them advice on what stuff to buy. Right. So yeah. reps are. Our customers are buying from reps who are really their peers, right. so they, and they trust their peers because most likely their peers are their friends, and they're somehow connected to them in some way. Whether they go to class with them, or they're their gym buddies, or whatever. So you're going to trust your peers, um, and you want to help your peers out. So for our business, um, it's not something that's a huge concern for us because most people do want to help each other out, and right. um, that that network seems to work well. Yeah. On the other, you know, so there's the, the sales reps which you built out, the guerrilla marketing, um, and talk about some of the, you've had some platform horrors. Yeah. Stories. So talk Definitely. about some of the software. What do you use now to manage a business and maybe talk about some of the, the pitfalls with the, the software? So we use Shopify now, which I absolutely love. Um, we've done a bunch of, I mean, we've been on every type of platform you can imagine from a completely custom built platform to something um, I don't, I don't want to get whatever. You don't, you don't have to mention names, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, whoever the other people are. I think the most important thing to keep in mind is that there's no one that will do the work for you. There's no, there's no like big secret. Right. There's no like overnight success. I'm going to launch this store here and overnight it's gonna you know we're gonna do you know a million bucks a month it yeah. doesn't work that way because you um, were promised some things it sounded like yeah i was i was promised a lot of things and i think a lot of i think it probably happens to a lot of people i think a lot of people they're you know the sales pitch is really big and yeah. when it comes down to yeah. it it doesn't actually play out that way and yeah. you know the person who sold you the stuff is no longer the person who you're talking to and the person you're talking right. to is you know, what are you talking about? I've never heard of that before. So there's obviously a disconnect, right? Right, right. Um, and I think that's probably part of the problem. But 
yeah, I think it's just the most important thing to keep yeah. in mind is that when it, you know if someone promises you the world, if it's too good to be true, it definitely probably is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Be aware of big claims because I think it was like someone yeah. promised, oh, we'll revamp your site and you'll get a twenty five percent increase or whatever. And yeah, I would I would say any of those numbers I wouldn't listen to. And right. uh, you've got to know your business inside and out. You got to know what you're good at and. Um, the only projections you can make is is based on stuff that you know. Not, no, no, no one knows your business better than you do. Yeah. So um, I think that's important to keep in mind. So right now you use Shopify. Any specific apps that you like on Shopify or any other type of yeah, we software? Use, uh, yeah, we use uh, Yapo for our reviews, mm -hmm. and Yapo has been absolutely amazing. They are constantly rolling out really cool features and things that we potentially will build, will want to build out ourselves, um, but we'll be able to just easily plug in using their API. So Yapo we like a lot. How do you spell um, that? Y-O-T-P-O. Okay. So um, that's a big one for us. We This isn't an app, but we recently just integrated Apple Pay which has been really? working really well for us on mobile as well as the desktop. Hmm. And our customers seem to really like that as well. Um, college students again, just again, are... college students, they're very tech savvy. So um, and the checkout process is really a lot easier. And um, it's actually thanks to Shopify that, that we're able to do that. And uh, probably the last thing that our customers tend to like the most is we give uh, Facebook updates. So hmm. if you place an order from our site, we'll actually shoot you a Facebook private message. Really? For for confirmation, and we'll give you updates along the way through Facebook message. So when it ships out, you'll get a thing. Oh, and like a bot? Well, it's somewhat, yeah, kind of like a bot. Yep. Okay. That's cool. And then any other thing to manage, like inventory or things like that, that you use? Um, we use a bunch of different things, honestly. Yeah. What's the most challenging part right now? Um... Because obviously you've overcome some of the, the software stuff. You have yeah. a lot of reps coming in, even thousands of applications of reps coming in. I think the, I mean, I think the toughest thing for anyone is, is having a pulse on the market and where the market's going and, and mm -hmm. things that are going to be new and exciting and innovative. And you know, I'd like to think that we're good at that. But again, that's something that's constantly changing. It's very dynamic. You never know. And um, that's kind of an ongoing job. So. Um, that's something that that's always a challenge. Yeah, and Russell, the other thing that's interesting, especially that's what I always picture with with reps or college. Like, there's always a lot of grill marketing. What was something yeah. you thought would work really well and just didn't work? Hmm. I'm gonna have to get back to you on that one. I mean, there, I'm sure there are plenty of things. I just yeah. can't think of something right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let me think about that. Yeah. Um, so. I want to ask, you know, I always ask because it's Inspired Insider, two things. One, what's been the lowest moment in the business? And then what's been the proudest moment in the business? What's been the lowest? Hmm. The lowest moment for us. We, we had a situation where we were operating with that model of having inventory in a bunch of different schools. And at the time, we were comparatively a lot smaller, and a bunch of inventory had gone missing. Enough inventory really? that, yeah, enough inventory that, you know, we were like, this could potentially, you know, ruin this business. Someone's taking it, possibly. We weren't exactly sure what was going on. Um, but yeah, that that wasn't fun. Um, but again, we we thankfully were able to figure out that that model didn't work that well, and um, were able to fix it. Um, that's tough I, because that's that's hard earned money that you yeah, need to run yeah, the business, especially early on. I mean, I think you think about it when people start up. When people start up a product-based business, one of their largest uh, places they're putting money into is inventory. And that's, I mean, 
that's that's your whole business. If that stuff goes missing, then then that's it. So um, you know, for us, it was you know let's figure out how to fix this or figure out where that inventory went and you know get that solved. So you switched the model a bit. One that wasn't. Yeah, that was part of the cat. That was you know part of it. Um, that wasn't the only thing that made us go. Again, a bunch of the other things that we spoke about earlier, but yeah, um, again, making that was the customer part. experience the same and all those customer experience yeah. the same. I mean, when you when you get a package from Campus Protein, you want to have that same exciting feeling every right. single time, and we couldn't guarantee that with right. the other model. It's tough. So yeah, yeah. If we want. It's kind of cool it. though to have someone deliver to your door for your hand and. Oh, it was so yeah. cool! Yeah. It was so cool. Um, yeah, we we got a lot of compliments on it at the time, and. Um, yeah, it's always something that that we think about, and um, we've done a couple test test models in, in New York City and different things that we're working on. But um, yeah, we're it's like Uber for body, you know, protein. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Proudest. What's been a proud moment? I mean, obviously, there's the business competition. <coughs> that, that was a super amazing uh, feat. That allowed you to kind of do this full time. Uh, what else has been been proud? Um, I mean, all the sales benchmarks aside, I think for me, Mike and Tarun, some of our some of the proudest moments have been honestly some of the emails we've gotten yeah. from people just having absolutely incredible transformations. Um, some people like life-changing transformations. Mm. We've <clears throat> spoken to, you know, again, it's it's a type of thing where you get to meet a ton of cool people, not just the reps, but the customers as well. And it's super inspiring. It's inspiring for us. It's humbling. Um, you know, we've again, we've dealt from, we've dealt with customers who have had just the most incredible transformations we've ever seen to people who overcame. Um, diseases and hmm. um, what do you mean? So, for example, one of our customers was uh, battling cancer, hmm. and they were losing a lot of weight. And they had heard about us, and we um, ended up becoming really close with this customer. And they ended up taking a mass gainer, and thankfully, they are. Um, they don't currently have cancer anymore, and they're doing really well, and they're really healthy. But um, just seeing that has been absolutely remarkable for us. They were using that to kind of just keep the weight on that they were losing with the treatments right. and things like that. Exactly. Yeah. What's another amazing transformation? You mentioned there's been some amazing – what's uh, – I mean, we've seen get... it the other way. People who have you know, struggled – I mean, me personally, growing up – I'll be honest. Like, you're also – like you – like you, I don't lift a lot of weights, so I'm trying yeah. to, yeah. Um, we, uh, you mean trans transformation-wise? Yeah. We've seen, I mean, we've seen people who have, I don't want to say struggled their whole lives because they're not that old yet, but have struggled for a very long time with their weight, and um, we've gotten them on a program, and our reps have assisted them with different workout programs and regimens, um, coupled with really awesome supplements and they've taken off a you know a crazy amount of weight yeah. so um, kind of on the other end of the spectrum yeah Russell I have one last question uh, before sure. I ask it I want to point people towards campusprotein.com and where else should we point people towards online so they make sure to check uh, it out yeah you, you can check out campusprotein.com you can check out our Instagram it's just at campusprotein there's always awesome content going up there and then our Snapchat, we usually have a uh, different rep at a different university taking it over every single day. Mm -hmm. And again, that's just Campus Protein on Snapchat. Yeah. So before I ask the last question, I want to ask, what did we miss with the story? What What did we not cover that would be important to talk about? Because um, I want to say my think, best question for last. So. Yeah, I think... Um, I think for us, it's it's an interesting dynamic, and it's something really cool and really special that we, me and my two business partners, feel <clears throat> excuse me, really lucky to have. Is you know, not many people get to do what they love 
be super passionate about it. And on top of all that, get to go to work every day with their friends. Yeah. And, you know, that's something that we get to do every single day. Yeah. And it's an absolute pleasure. Yeah. And we've all learned a lot from each other. And we complement each other really well. Um, you all go into the Manhattan office or? Correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, all, we're all in the Manhattan yeah. office. Um, yeah. So what's a typical day? Like Every day. Honestly, every day is different. And, you know, although... You know, we, we all still wear um, a ton of hats, and for us, it's always kind of good to know what's going on in different facets of the business, and, um, you know, we'll kind of be on top of everything all the time. But um, that experience has been absolutely incredible uh, for all of us, so um, it's something really special, and we feel really lucky. How do you guys uh, solve disagreements? Not like major disagreements, but if, you know, you have three people, mm -hmm. and you need to make a big decision, how do you... How do you I mean, that? I... Yeah, I, we've gotten to the point where, look, with uh, any business and any partnership, you've got to have a lot of trust. And I think we all really trust each other, and that's something that's really important. And you have to know what your strengths are, know what you're good at, and uh, not really let your ego get in the way. So um, for us, I think we've done as good of a job as we can of knowing what we're good at, and we're all good at different things. So. You know, thankfully, it worked out that way. I mean, it's some of the best arguments. I mean, some of the arguments we have end up coming end up being the best ideas right. because you know. Yeah, like what? Yeah. Give me an example. Yeah, where you challenged each other and something. What came of it? Because this I, is interesting. Because it is true. Yeah. I can't think of a a big thing right now, but I'll definitely get back to you on it. There's that. I mean, there's been plenty of things where there have been, you know, some disagreements, and then we're like, "Wow, this has been, you know, the greatest idea." You flushed it out. Yeah, and and, and ends up really working out well. And um, yeah, let me get back to you. On Does that. it tend to be a certain category, like a new product, or more on the technology or more operations? Is there like a a trend there with where you guys get passionate with each other? We each definitely have our areas that we're more passionate about, for yeah. sure. For sure, we're you know everyone's. Uh, we all have a consistent uh, view on campus protein, but we all kind of have um, different ideas to attribute to that consistent view. Yeah. So, Russell, first of all, thank you. You know, I love the story. Um, I love doing the research for the campus protein, and what you've <laughs> created is pretty is amazing. Um, with oh, the sales reps in the company and just grinding because it just had to be it's a it's a journey to get there and oh, it's, and a it's lot of risk true. also you know it's, yeah it was fun it's been fun. um my last question is um about a fun fact that we were talking about in the beginning and sure. when i asked you what a fun fact that most people don't know about you yeah. is that you have a love for magic Huge so, love yeah magic. so what do you mean so i i also do so yeah okay I was interested. I didn't want you to tell me anything else in the beginning. I was like, just tell me where that comes from. Yeah. So my grandpa actually got me into magic when I was younger. And it was just one of those things I stuck with. I loved it. I mean, I had... You perform it. I perform it. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. I perform it. Um, at, I mean, when I was younger, I was performing at like bar mitzvahs during like cocktail hours. Bar really? Stuff like that. So you, were, you, you were a paid professional. <laughs> not paid a lot, but I was paid. Uh, but for me, I didn't, I mean, I obviously didn't stick with it, but when I was in college, I mean, I did a lot of magic when I was in college. You did. And it kind of came out of nowhere. I remember doing some trick to someone I thought it was really cool. I'm like, oh my God, did you know that Russ could do magic? And I showed a bunch of people and my fraternity ended up voting me to do this college-wide talent show really and it was this magic trick called metamorphosis where a guy and a girl switches places it's it's a box someone put it up on youtube um is it up it on was, youtube yeah it's up on youtube i'm gonna somewhere. post it in this in the notes of this interview what's the what's okay. it called do you remember if i look up russell Sachs like metamorphosis will it come up you, yeah you, you might be able to get it that way i don't okay. know somebody threw it up there um but it was in front of you know it was, you know, one of the scariest moments of my life because I'm like, if I screw this trip up, I'm this trip up. I am literally the laughing stock of 
of this uh, school. So yeah, it was uh, it was fun. So what's a f another favorite go-to trick for you? Uh, car Let tricks are always easy. I, I do this one trick that's uh, one of my favorites where I uh, rip off a piece of, you, you select a card, we, we rip off a corner of the card and I give you that corner and we look in the fridge and for example, last time I did this trick with a Snapple bottle. We take your card we, you know, the corner's ripped off, it goes back in the deck, we shuffle it up, we say some magic words, the card disappears entirely from the deck, we go through every single card that's not in there. That's we amazing. take this, and this past yeah. trick, this last time I did it was a Snapple bottle, we take it out, brand new sealed Snapple bottle, you can hear the pop and everything, we pour out the Snapple, inside's a card from missing corner. That's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah it's that's really cool. unbelievable. Right. Do, you have a, do you have a video of that? That I don't have. You don't. And, uh, that I'm not is, a big promoter of myself doing magic. It's just by coincidence. That there should be a page on Campus Protein <laughs> that is labeled Russell's Magic. And oh, I guarantee you that's going to go wild. <laughs> um, do you have a favorite magician these days? I love David Copperfield. David always, Copperfield? Yeah, I always love David yeah. Copperfield. Well, I'm going to definitely find that video and make sure okay. it's on this post. That is right. awesome. And... Right. Um, Russell, just thank you. I appreciate your time. And well, everyone should you. check out campusprotein.com. Um, it's been great. Thanks so much for Thanks. having me. Appreciate it. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, like a peach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.